Welcome back to the High Yield Video Question Bank, where I give you challenging practice questions to train your brain to develop the patterns of thinking necessary to do very well on USMLE and Comlex. A patient presents to the emergency department complaining of arthralgias. Vitals reveal a blood pressure of 128 over 82, heart rate is 80, respiratory rate is 16, and their temperature is a febrile. On exam, you note bluish black ear cartilage. The patient provides a urine drug screen as part of a typical workup. And when you go back 60 minutes later to dip the urine, you note that the cup is now black. Which of the following pathophysiologies best explains this presentation? A, decreased phenylalanine hydroxylase. B, decreased branch chain alpha ketoacid dehydrogenase. C, congenital deficiency of homogentisate oxidase, D, cystothionine synthase deficiency, or E, excess cysteine-induced precipitation of hexagonal cysteine stones. Pause the video if you would like some time to think about this. The correct answer to this question is choice C, congenital deficiency of homogentisate oxidase. And the reason that this is the correct answer is because what we're seeing here is alcaptonuria. So let's go back to the vignette and look at the important pieces of information that you needed to pull out of the question in order to identify first that this was alcaptonuria. So what I told you is that the ear cartilage was bluish black, and then the patient provides a urine sample, and then approximately 60 minutes later, that urine sample is black. Okay, so in alcaptonuria, the pathophysiology that's responsible for that disease is congenital deficiency of homogentisate oxidase, which means that in the pathway that typically breaks down tyrosine to fumarate, you get the formation of this pigment forming homogentisic acid. And so that homogentisic acid, instead of going through a typical degradation pathway, will build up, now this is autosomal recessive, and it causes discoloration because it's pigment forming. So things are gonna be bluish black. And we tend to see this in the ear cartilage, we can see it in the sclera, and we see it in the urine. Now this is benign, although it looks you know, somewhat frightening, and the patients may have other nonspecific symptoms like arthralgias, et cetera. Okay, so the key takeaway is that if you see ears, hands, or urine, it's bluish black, and discolored, you want to think about alcaptonuria. So this question was a third order question. The first part of the question re required you to identify the disease. And then the second part of the question required you to match the disease with its pathophysiology. So again, this is sort of the summary of alcaptonuria. Homogentisate oxidase is uh, deficient. Therefore, there's an increase in homogentisic acid, which is pigment forming. This is autosomal recessive and you see blue-black discoloration, ears, mouth area, eyes, and urine, okay? Now let's go back to the question and see if we could have eliminated other incorrect answer choices based on what we know. So choice A, decreased phenylalanine hydroxylase, that is phenylketonuria, or PKU. Choice B, decreased branch chain alpha ketoacid dehydrogenase, that is the pathophysiology for maple syrup urine disease. Choice D, cystothionine synthase deficiency, that is the pathophysiology behind homocystinuria. And then choice E, excess cysteine-induced precipitation of hexagonal cysteine stones, that's the pathophysiology behind cystinuria. And the reason that these are possible answer choices is because in many of these diseases, we're going to see abnormalities in the urine. So again, in this question, you're told that the urine turns blue-black or black approximately 60 minutes after it's provided. However, these other diseases also have changes in the urine. So if we look at this chart, we see that I have PKU, maple syrup urine disease, homocystinuria, and cystinuria. Again, in the center column, you see pathophysiology there. And in the right-hand column, you see what you might find in the urine. So in phenylketonuria, remember that this creates a musty odor. Now, typically that odor is associated with body odor, but it could be the urine as well. 
In maple syrup urine disease, you're going to see urine that smells like maple syrup, hence the name maple syrup urine disease. In homocystinuria, you're going to see homocysteine in the urine. So the test writer will give you that in some way, or they'll probably give you other symptoms not having to do with the urine. Um, again, in homocystinuria, some of those symptoms that you might want to look out for is the marfanoid habitus, cardiovascular effects. Patients tend to be very kyphotic with their spine. They have ocular changes where the lens will sublux kind of inward and downward. And these patients tend to develop osteoporosis. So that's homocystinuria. But all of those features were not in this question, so we, we could have eliminated the pathophysiology associated with it. And then cystinuria, in the urine, you'll see hexagonal cysteine stones. So looking at this chart, the key takeaway is that the typical symptomatology associated with these various diseases, which invariably can have different presentations, but more importantly for this question, different findings in the urine, we don't see any of these symptoms. And, and um, one, going back to PKU, because I, I kind of breezed through that one, in PKU, you would tend to see things like intellectual disability, seizures, the musty body odor or urine that we talked about, fair skin, uh, growth deficiencies, and eczema. We don't see any of those features really in this question, so we can eliminate PKU. And then in maple syrup urine disease, um, that will be associated with things like intellectual disability and neurological defects. Again, we don't see that either. So we can effectively eliminate PKU, maple syrup, urine disease, homocystinuria, and cystinuria. But the big purpose of this question was to not only continue training your brain to answer third order questions, but also call your attention to the different findings of these various diseases, which are somewhat similar in the sense that they all have different findings in the urine. Best of luck.